South Africa's water crisis is reaching boiling point. As Gauteng residents brace for a planned 54-hour water shutdown next week, northwest residents have already suffered regular cuts and unreliable and some say unsafe supply. Such problems are becoming more and more common as the, waters, uh, uh, the country's water infrastructure falls further into decline. So who's to blame and what can be done? I'm joined now by Gundo Maswima. He is a lecturer in the Civil Engineering Department at the University of Cape town and has been quoted quite widely on this and other issues pertaining to engineering. Gunda, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, you know, the electricity issue has really taken center stage, but what we've learned in a city like Johannesburg, after a week or so of on-again, off-again electricity, very soon to follow are going to be water outages because of the impact on the on-again, of the on-again, off-again uh, uh, electricity is situation. The idea that uh, the, the sort of the picture that us normal or regular residents get is that the wheels have come off a major city like Johannesburg. But something like you have written and quoted, we have been quoted about repeatedly, that we've seen in smaller municipalities as well. What is the biggest issue here? Wheels have come off, maintenance hasn't been done. How is there a way for us to get our cities and our municipalities' water infrastructure back where it should be? Thank you, uh, Marcel. I think first it's important to note that uh, this is not a problem that has just started now. Mm. Uh, if you look at the amount of uh, expenditure on maintenance of water infrastructure in South Africa, you realize from year 1976, it almost came to an abrupt uh, stop. And by that, I mean it was drastically reduced. The reason was that the state had decided to divert most of the funds into safety and security after the Soweto uprising and the other things that were happening. So in many instances, when you look at water infrastructure uh, in a place like Gauteng, you are looking at infrastructure that has not been touched since uh, 1976, and that is where the problems are. Of course, there has been maintenance happening over the years, uh, and the government picked up um, maintenance peaking in around 2008, uh, but what we what we are realizing now is that we have reached that point where the design life of most infrastructure uh, units has been reached now, and it's time to do um, uh, major reforms. But over and above that, also to remember that with infrastructure, if you keep maintaining it at the uh, right time proactively, you will find that you just have to tweak it here and there. And you, the need for uh, major upgrades will be uh, reduced. So that has not really happened in many instances. And for that reason, the infrastructure has become so dilapidated that uh, uh, it's not functioning properly. So we're going to have more and more uh, uh, breakdowns. And many municipalities do not have the type of funding that can reverse the situation. So we've got an aging infrastructure. We don't have the funding. Do we have the human capital, the human resources, and the expertise to do that kind of work at the level that it's needed, and urgently so? Yes, that's, that is an uh, important question. But what we need to note is that uh, in 2021, this country has the highest number of engineers that is, it has ever had, that it has ever had at any point in its history. So for that reason, we could be, in the, we are in the best position now than we were in 1985, for example, when the country had much fewer engineers. Of course, the water infrastructure was saving a much smaller mm. uh, population uh, because over the last um, uh, 20 years or so, we have managed to, the, uh, the government has managed to, to uh, provide water uh, and, uh, to more than 90, 95, 96% of the population coming from uh, about 76% in uh, 1994. So for that reason, we have more people using the infrastructure. Uh, we, we may never get to a point where we have enough uh, engineers, but if we are systematic in our approach, uh, and uh, we optimize the use of the resources that we have, that would uh, assist. But municipalities have got another bigger um, challenge, uh, except the, the, the issue of skills. That is a big problem. I know municipalities, 
that the, the, the most senior person responsible for water infrastructure uh, has an HR qualification in some, uh, in some instances, uh, mm. a, a, an FET qualification in business, and I'm actually quoting uh, real uh, circumstances which uh, many municipalities find themselves in. But you must also remember municipalities get only 9% uh, of, of the uh, taxes from the national fiscals. So what that means is that they have to, the 9% is dis distributed across all municipalities. Province gets 45, uh, 44%, national gets um, 45%. So you can see the expectation was that municipalities have got a better capacity to raise funds from uh, rates and taxes. Mm -hmm. But it's not happening, and no one is bold enough to go and look at that formula and say, let's change this formula and see how we can reduce funding to, say, province. Yeah. Because in my opinion, there's a lot of uh, things that if province was not doing, it wouldn't really make that much of a difference. Now, just before I spoke to you, I spoke to Deboho Kass from the SMME forum, and he said he called for an end to government austerity and called for government to move very quickly to roll out infrastructure projects that he says has already been gazetted under the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Commission. And I think, uh, you know, at a very uh, low ground, uh, grassroots level, he's talking about the fact that in an instance like this, if a municipality doesn't have the expertise or they just don't have enough people to see to a current water issue, let's say, as an example, um, do they have the ability then to get in um, uh, 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 somebody else, a little company or a local SMME to go and do the work that they can't get to because they do not have um, the, the human capital or the, the all hands on deck or the expertise to be able to do it? How does it work at that level uh, when it comes to expenditure um, uh, outside of the fact that you're saying that they just don't have enough money to start with? Okay. Um, almost all infrastructure work that is done in local municipalities is outsourced. So a consultant has to be appointed to do the designs, and then they go and tender and appoint a contractor. There is hardly any local municipality that does their own designs, mm -hmm. maybe for the most minor of um, the operations, that is where they would design. But everything is outsourced. So the engineers that are in the private sector are the ones who are mainly responsible for the maintenance of uh, water infrastructure. But infrastructure projects are as successful as their project managers. The project mm -hmm. managers are in government. So you might commission for work to be done. That is not as agent. But there's another uh, problem that I think our legislative framework uh, presents uh, to municipalities is the fact that we have an ID process, IDP process, integrated development planning process that designates, uh, that expects that all municipalities must go to the community, find out what their needs are and integrate that into their planning. So in many instances, the mayor who actually champions that IDP uh, process with the speaker collects a list of projects that the community wants, which is barely underground infrastructure like water and sanitation. So the only time communities will want water and sanitation infrastructure is when the storage is on the surface or there is no water coming through the pipe. The rest of the time, they will prepare, prefer a community hall. Uh, they will prefer a road. Uh, so that is that is the first complication. So the, the mayor must now choose between the engineer, what the engineer is telling him and the community. Remember, they are hired by the community and they hire the engineers. So you already see mm -hmm. uh, where the problem comes from. Everyone wants a legacy that can be seen. When it's underground, no one will see it. So mm -hmm. the engineers want to be proactive because they are blamed when things fall apart. Uh, but so there's, there is that dynamic in, uh, uh, in many uh, municipalities. So, so that is the first. The second thing is that water and sanitation projects most uh, in most instances require a water use license uh, that comes from the uh, Department of uh, water, Affairs, uh, water Affairs. They require an environmental impact assessment done that comes from the uh, Department of Environmental Affairs. So in many instances, those two documents will delay a project by the one that I've seen the longest was five years. Sure. So for five years, you have the designs, 
you have everything, but you're waiting for an approval or a go ahead. And now the municipal infrastructure grant by that time comes in, you have budgeted for that, and you're not starting, it means you're not spending. So you will then have to divert uh, money into some, some something else. I know an instant where an engineer decided that he's going to take it upon himself, go and build without all of that. Uh, the build took about three years. When it was finished, an official from Environmental Affairs only then arrives to say, um, I have come to check on this uh, project. I want to go to the site where you want to build it. Uh, and only then he wants to be told that it's already been built. So there's also that. Now, you mentioned the presidential infrastructure projects. There aren't uh, many big problems with, with those projects. They are mostly running well and they are moving very fast. But these are 21 projects, uh, even though they are major projects. So their contribution to the infrastructure rollout is very insignificant. If It, it shouldn't be more than 5% of expenditure on infrastructure. Uh, and the reason uh, for that is that they have a separate piece of legislation that makes it easy for them to be exp expedited. There's a political committee chaired by the, the president or the vice president when it's not there, and there are premiers that sit or uh, Nate and so on. But the real infrastructure rollout is what should be happening in municipalities and in mm. provinces. Well, Kundo, ones, unfortunately, no we have run out of time. I'm going to have to leave you there because we didn't even get to talk about policies and the impact on uh, corruption and inefficiencies in the municipality as well. Another thing that we need to pick your brain on, but I'm sure we'll have um, an, another excuse to have you on. Thank you so much for uh, sharing some of that fascinating insight this evening. We thank you for your time. Gundo Maswime is a lecturer in the Civil Engineering Department at the University of Cape Town. And if you do Google his name, you'll see some of the very interesting articles as he he's written about in that space and like you said uh, like he said uh, not always the sexiest topic because it's not infrastructure you can see but it's so important because it has an impact on our day-to-day -day lives